I can even see the res uh, response options in here. I can use schedule assistant to see what those people's availability are if they're inside my organization. Mm -hmm. If they're outside my organization, obviously I'm not gonna see how busy they are. When you create an event, as you can see, oh, there is a scheduling assistant. <gasps> I just never create events like this. I'm so sorry, everyone. Okay, so, oh, what? it looks so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I hate you right now. <laughs> hey guys, it's Kaylee, and in this video, Bobby and I are going head to head to decide which is better, Outlook desktop application or Outlook webmail. I'm so excited for you guys to check out this video and decide who wins. Comment down below who you think is winning while you're watching the video, and let's get into it. And we are going to start with round one, which is home screen. Okay, so here's the home screen that you have. Um, I'm using my demo email account. <clears throat> and, and you can see this is called the ribbon. So you have a lot of information up here at the top, a lot of lists, probably more than what you would have from webmail. So there is a little bit of an inundation of information here. And you do have the separation of the panes. These are called panes. So I have the left side pane, I have the uh, viewing pane, and then the read pane. And I can change these views undergoing here and I can change them right here. So that is kind of how the home screen is organized. And I have different tabs that gives me different information here, like send, receive, folder. I don't even believe you have a send and receive in webmail because you're not sending or receiving, you're just seeing what's on the site. So that's yeah. probably not gonna be on yours. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think that's that's pretty much it. Uh, okay. do, do you feel like there's anything else? And then I have these tabs down here, obviously, that, that provide access to, you know, your calendar, contacts, tasks, and that fun stuff. Yeah, that's very important to, to list because mine's a little bit different. So okay. that's good. So let's um, contrast and compare. So as I share my screen, and you, I will notice, <laughs> you will notice that right away it looks pretty different. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. You can tell that here's all my folders. That's pretty the same. You know, I can click on them and go to that specific folder. Um, but one thing that's definitely different that he brought up is that ribbon. That ribbon is not here. There is no such thing <laughs> as a ribbon here. Um, that I think is something that was a little too overwhelming that they didn't want to add. There was so much in that ribbon that you didn't really necessarily need. So this is just all that you need to see um at first glance then when you click on it here is our our you know things that we're going to talk about that bobby sent me you can move this little window to drag it and it's the same kind of setup as you can have the folders on one on the left the middle is the view of just like the simplified view of it and then the right is where you pull up the email itself. Then you can also double can, click. Can you change the read panes? Can you change the view on those? Like So yes, yeah, so, so how that works is you actually click the settings option right here and here's where you change, like you can change the density, uh, which I think this is really interesting. I have it on full, which means that you can see if they have a picture, if they have a picture icon, it shows up uh, as well, which is a little bit like text message or you can do medium which doesn't show the picture and then compact, which compacts everything very close together um, to where you have a lot more in your screen view, which I think is interesting. Um, you can change the notifications on here to dark mode if you want it to be like dark, <laughs> which is really cool. And then you can also change, um, yeah, the reading pane. Hey, hey now, now you're just showing off, okay? Now I have those two, they're just not in one little. Yes. Thing. This, this is, he has all of these things, but they're on that ribbon, right? The ribbon Some are. The, top. The, uh -huh. the, the dark mode isn't. Uh, yeah. I know I can do it in dark mode. I just haven't set that up in a, so long. I can't, I'm not even sure where I set that at. Yeah, but the, the thing that he was talking about, that's where you would do this, is the reading pane. <clears> well, I think that brings up a good bottom. point, is like, for the most part, any settings that you want to do in webmail is under the gear. That's it. That's, that's where it's at. That's like, correct. Yeah. Um, that's for Outlook, there are settings hidden in the bowels all over the place. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, you sometimes have to go, you have to go uh, like a hide and seek is kind right. of like what, it, what you're doing. You're going spelunking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
that that's a that, that's a great point most of most of the things if you don't see it you click on that gear and a lot of the times that's where it is <laughs> it's in the gear right so yeah that's a great point it's just it's just um you know, if you want everything to be simplified when you show it up and you just want the bare minimum, this is your kind of view. Um, if you want all of your options laid out in front of you, then, you know, your view is probably Bobby's view. Um, so that really depends on your opinion. I even loved how they made, you could bunch up your messages pretty close together if you want them all in a closer view like I think that's pretty cool I don't know if yours has that but I haven't seen it yet but um I think that's pretty cool something that that ours does um ours I'm speaking of webmail users (laughs) right we're a group we meet on Thursdays (laughs) so the second thing we're going to talk about is access to mail anywhere Some of you guys think it's pretty obvious, but it is something that we do have to mention that when it comes to having the desktop application, not everyone has that downloaded onto their computer anywhere, and Mm -hmm. um, you'll have to download that onto computers that you would like to use and you would like to pull it up on, whereas webmail can be accessed anywhere. You just need a browser and you just need to be able to search for it. So that is something to think about. Um, yeah, I think for, there's something there's something to take into consideration when you're when you're discussing that. Yeah, uh, I am going to share my screen for just a second. Uh, I can chain like add an account in email here, right? And you can mm-hmm. do things like profile. You can you can create a new Outlook profile. So this all loads under um, your profile. And let me try and show you what I'm talking about here. <clears throat> So I can I can I can come under here and I can click this mail section under the control panel mm-hmm. and I can create a new profile. So I'm going to show the profile. Everything keeps showing up on the left. Um, so this profile is configured as me. So I could hit add here and I could put Kaylee. Right. And I could have a different profile and I could say prompt me. So every time I open up Outlook, it's going to say, hey, do you want to open up Outlook as me or do you want to open it as Kaylee or whoever? So you can kind of have some different customization, mm-hmm. but I think it's kludgy. It, it's not the best effective way to do it. I mean, it does show the nice handsome picture of me that way, but you can still get that from the webmail. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you can kind of get the user ability, but for Kaylee's side of things, I'm, I'm kind of defending you in this situation. Um, it is much easier. One of the things you do want to consider, though, is doing it as a private browser tab. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so what I mean by that is, <clears throat> like, uh, I am, when I am um, going to access webmail here, right, it's logged in as me. It's 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 got my browser information. It knows who I am. So I should open up in a new private window. And what that's going to do is see how it turns black and says, oh, hey, you're opening at a new private window. So if you're sitting down at uh, maybe a computer you're not typically working at, you always want to make sure it's a machine that you feel safe Mm -hmm. checking your webmail. But if you do feel it's a safe one, it's it's always a best bet, if it's not your normal machine, to open a private browser and then go to your webmail. If you do that, two things are going to happen. First off, it is not going to try to save any settings that the other person had on their browser. So it's going to just start fresh with no assumptions whatsoever. Second is it's not going to save anything. Mm-hmm. So anything that you're doing or saving or working in that browser, when you close that tab out in general will not be saved. Yeah. So that's just something to consider when you're trying to access your mail from anywhere that isn't a typical box that you're accessing it from. So a private browser tab would be how I would do it. So the Third thing that we're going to talk about is creating an email. So Bobby's going to pull up his screen first and show you how his looks. I don't know. I always go. I I explained that at the beginning. Okay. So here's the home screen that we already showed before. So I'm going to go ahead and just say new message. And you can do a new message from here, but they also have some cool options under new items. So I could little extra kick here. Uh, I could go to a meeting. I could create a new meeting. Or I could even create a new contact. 
So, but that's the power of ribbons. So uh, that's the power of ribbons. <laughs> just throwing that in there. So then I have my two. So I can do auto completion. So if I say Kaylee, see how it automatically brings up Kaylee, and I can that's put me. her name in here. And then I can do a subject of Wax the Cat. It's a critical subject. Um, and <laughs> now I'm I'm working on my email. Notice it has my signature. If I want to do anything with my signature, that's located under Options. Mm -hmm. Uh, something that I think is also really important, and this is kind of getting into the second category, just the sh uh, shade, mm -hmm. but um, under options, if I want to do anything with my signature, uh, that's right here, but under options is where I can add like from and blind carbon copy. Hmm. So by default, I have it turned on right now, but by default, Outlook does not have that on. So hmm. normal people would see this, no blind carbon copy, but I went ahead and went under options and added it. But you could also do from, see, so now I have more columns here, so I could pretend to be somebody else. Now you have to have security permissions to do that. Mm. You can't just pretend to be anybody unless you're a hacker. Um, <laughs> and then blind carbon copy, in case people aren't familiar with what blind carbon copy is, it's basically if I wanted to send uh, this also to Sean, Kaylee won't know that I included Sean in this email message. Mm -hmm. Maybe because I'm talking shade about Sean and I want, Kaylee to talk back and then Sean see it. <laughs> now, what is interesting is if Kaylee replies back to the email message that I sent, it's not going to automatically blind carbon copy Sean because her email client didn't see it. Mm, so yeah. the only, I'll have to forward the message. This is kind of a shady perspective, but there's also good reasons why you want to do it. Maybe there's 20 people that you're wanting to send a generic email to, and you don't want them all to see the email message for that person's, like everybody's address. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's like a neighborhood group, and you don't want everybody to know everybody's email address. So this would be a great spot to use that for. Yeah. All right. Let me see yours. All right. So... Mine is going to be up in this corner. Um, no, I cannot create a meeting or an appointment or oh. anything like that. <laughs> woo hoo hoo. You just click two other things to go do that. So let's still click. One thing that I did forget to um, to say is when you were showing the views. Um, for your view, you can add right that column to the very right that shows your calendar stuff is yes. that correct yes the task uh, view you do not I, have task view options i do have this what where did that come from it's up at the top and it's called my day um and it shows you a brief look oh. of the entire day it's really nice and you just pull it up um but that was i forgot to say I like that, that for better. the one i like it a lot i know it's a newer thing don't but. be using your stars now come on now Okay, so that wasn't even my thing that I wanted to share extra. So you click on new message and it will pull up. Now, this might be biased of me or whatever, but I do feel like everything that I need is already here and easy to access. I don't have the ribbon. There's not as many things that I can do like Bobby has, but everything that I do need is already there. Um, for example, I do have the BCC, but it's already there and all you have to do is click on this and it shows up now at the bottom. So you don't have to click on an extra tab or anything like that. It's just right there already. Then the other thing. Oh, that I didn't even I go love, in encryption. It's right there. I didn't realize it dropped. Encryption right the is literally nice. right there. It's right in your face. I know. It's like, do you want to encrypt? And you're like, well, I guess if it's right there, you know. Well, there's so many clients that I have talked to. I'm like, okay, you know, you've had the ability to send encrypted. E uh huh. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like we did that like last year. Yeah. I told I talked to your office manager, and they said they were going to inform you. No, they didn't tell me. You know, but it's <laughs> like right there. But they hide it. For mm -hmm. me, I don't know if you if people happen to notice when I was under the options sections, that's where it puts the encryption option. Yeah, you have to um, go to options. Yeah. yeah. So it, it does put the four main things is send the attachment option, which you can drop this down and go to the different things, as well as encrypt, discard, which is just completely ignored the email. It's weird. And they then, don't call it del del delete. They just call it discard. Discard. That's 
Yeah, it's another word. And then the dot, dot, dot has save draft. There's the signature that he was talking about, show from, sent, like set an importance of the email. Like, so this is where you would see. Oh, you can switch to plain text there. I did not know that. Yeah. So those are like things where it's like, oh, you want a little bit more? Click on the dot, dot, dot. And then there's some more. And I, I, I told, I told my mom this yesterday. I was like, mom when in doubt dot 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 i told you this yesterday too no no i, don't I did you were like where do i find this <laughs> when in doubt dot 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 so um so yeah so it's again you see a similar trend from our home screens it's simplified it has everything that it would expect you to really need right in your face and everything else is pretty hidden away yeah I, I, if you don't see that, man, I, I would not envy hunting trying to find that, though. Yeah. Um, the thing that you'll have oh, to do is just. More there. Yeah. This is, see, again, when in doubt, dot, dot, dot. It's the bottom, dot, dot, dot. But when in doubt, I would just go to your settings and search. <laughs> because there's a little search button in settings. And then you can find most of everything that you would need there. Uh-huh. As well. Well, while we're here, why don't you go ahead and start looking at the formatting piece? Yeah, so the formatting, um, all of my formatting is right here at the bottom. If you can see, they just have it laid out for you. Um, What's what's the dot on the formatting? What does that show you? What 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 are they hiding there? This one? Yeah. So this is going to be undo um redo there is remove formatting you can insert the cell spreadsheet i mean uh, insert a table you can um do the indent is that what it is justify oh justify right to left left to right so yeah so what you're going to see is probably he has very similar um, icons they're just probably in a different place going back to that ribbon constantly rock (laughs) We just have little ribbons. That that's why ribbons easy. are at the end of the finish line. That's mm. what I, I got to say. You don't see people not have a ribbon at the end. <laughs> okay. So uh, Kaylee is right. <clears throat> a lot of that is here. So we're going to do this subject again. Wax the cat. Mm, yep. So um, and in here I could say, like, say I'm doing a speech, right? So this is my uh, speech. Um uh, Uh, opener right and then we're going to have a topic a right and then we're going to do topic b and then topic c but then maybe i might want to say subcategory that we're going to be talking about and maybe i'm going to do a subcategory and then we'll do another subcategory in my speech what i like about this is i can come in here and i can say these are all bullet points but this guy is a sub bullet point. This guy's a sub bullet point. That guy's a sub bullet point. Using these yeah, guys. I can, I can also do this. I know you can. Um, so that's all well and good. But I just feel like this is just faster and easier in here. I can change the font. I can highlight. I can underline. It's just This is just the circle of, of friendship here. And also... I want to call an audible right here. Oh, me, oh my. Here's my audible, okay? I can copy and paste Excel files, and it formats it pretty well. Here's my cat waxing schedule. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) And it has the columns and everything with the highlights, and I can uh, click on here, and then it gives me the option to insert like maybe I'm like, oh, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Let's add a Saturday. So maybe yeah. I want to insert uh, one to the right, okay? And then I can change it. So there's a lot of flexibility here that I can have that I would want to change in this in this section here. What you mm-hmm. got, girl? Um, okay, so I don't have a um, a cell that I can just pull up, but let me use this insert table. You just like drag it to the square that you want, and then it gives you it. So I'll just do. Um, 
Yeah, I'm so, just curious how good it is when you're pasting in there. So look, I need the you web browser that, paste. Like you can insert, delete, merge, split, mm. style. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? It just yeah. doesn't. It doesn't look like how it does in Excel. Right. You know, but it has all those details that you can change. So you have to learn it. So it's a new learn. It's a so, new learn. So if, you, if you're used thing. to Word, then when you're creating an email, it's going to behave very similar to what you're used to. Mm -hmm. So the next thing we're going to talk about is creating and um, organizing your folders. So the folder structure and organizing, like we've talked in the past in previous videos, you definitely do not want to create folders here underneath the root. So we're only going to make them under inbox because we're not crazy people. Oh, um, we're not. Crazy. <laughs> so uh, you can do product launch. Right? So we're going to be launching a new product. Mm -hmm. right. That's going to be how to type is the product that we're going to be launching. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, after I do that, you see it appear here, um, and I can click on the folder. Of course, there's nothing in there at the moment, so I can click on the inbox here, and I can right-click on this, and I could say move, and I could say product launch. Now, if you've got 300 folders, which sometimes people do that, um, uh, you this may not be as helpful for you, right? Because yeah. this is uh, such a small amount, it's not as big a deal. But it is smart. To, it will throw up, not throw up, but it will throw replace. <laughs> it's, it, will, uh, it will put folders that you've cre recently created, assuming that you're probably going to want to move stuff to something that you just created. So it is a little bit more intelligent as far as the list that it provides here. But if not, you could say, okay, other folder. So that if it's not in your, it's assumptions here, you can hit other folder and just mm -hmm. browse to where it is. So then this was just a straight, or you could just copy or you could just drag it, right? You could just drag it right um, yep. into the product launch, right? I could do that. I could, if I wanted to just copy and I could uh, come over here to product launch and it, notice it doesn't give you a paste. It never, it doesn't, but I can control V um, and it will show up. Let me, it's making a liar out of me. Hold on. It's control C and I can go to product launch and go control V and there it is. Um, so you have to use the shortcuts at control C, control V, and it will work if you do that. Um, like to move it from one. If I want to copy it, like say, I don't, I didn't want to move it. I wanted mm -hmm. to copy it. Does okh. that make sense? Yeah, that does. Maybe. I want to leave it in my inbox, but I just want to have a copy of that message. You can do the uh, the copy and paste uh, between mm -hmm. those to do that. So that's what I got. Okay. Hmm. You're going to be very surprised <laughs> by this one. Okay. Um, okay. So when it comes to mine, um, it has a similar format on the side. I'll push it out a little bit so you can see it better. Um, you can close the favorites. They have favorites. They have the folders. I like all of your folders. Um, one thing that I love is notice right here is such an easy way to just click and add a favorites folder. So I can add my dad's inbox or, I mean, not my dad's, um, my dad's um, Email messages. Emails. So what that means is all of his emails will go to this folder. So it's like a, it's a, it's a search really is what it is. Yeah. Search for a favorite. Yeah. yeah. So you can create one right here as well as add one of the existing ones that you already have. Okay, well, we didn't go over that so that you're just showing off. Let's. Okay. It, it, yours, yours, you have to click on a few things to get to. You just have, right? You have to right click and yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, okay. So that was just right there. I just wanted to say that. Then the other thing that, um, <laughs> this is interesting. So um, you can add a new folder right here, but it doesn't uh, create folders like how Bobby was saying, you know, it's heresy if you do not create it under your inbox um, so folder. It's, en it's encouraging you to make it under the, it is. Yeah. That's crazy. Now, okay. the one thing that I will say is 
again, we've been noticing this, they have another lingo or they try to add new words. Um, when you right click on inbox, it says create new subfolder. So it calls them subfolders under your inbox. And to create a whole new folder, it wants you to create it outside of the inbox and have it completely separate. You want to, if you have it under the inbox, it is not a folder anymore. It is now called a subfolder. Okay. So it's like a new kind of thing. Sure. Um, so the thing that my dad was saying, what Bobby was saying um, about the copying of an email, it's very interesting on here, actually. You can right click on an email. And there's an option to copy, and you can copy it right what? to What? They give you a dialogue right box. Here. What? They do. It's wow. super easy here. Okay. And you can even create a new folder to copy it into. Oh, wow. Man, they really took that copy to a new level. I don't have yeah. that in mind. This Jeez. is something that I love is the easy access to move and everything with your with your um inbox and your emails that you have because look at all of these options <laughs> i Man, mean they really filled it up didn't they? it's insane like like you can snooze it <laughs> like it's so interesting i, I had a client it, it. like upset that when they were going to outlook from gmail they're like i can't snooze emails and i'm oh, like yeah. you can't do that really in outlook but you can yeah. do it in the webmail you can do it here this is That's very funny. this is very geared towards specifically that's a great point. Um, people that use Gmail, this has a lot of similar things that they had in Gmail that they don't have in the Outlook application. Mm -hmm. So that is something to bring up as well, which is a great point. Mm -hmm. But I just thought that was really interesting. Right click again on that. They've got a phishing section. Phishing section, as well as you can block, find emails mm -hmm. from this sender. And you can create a rule about it right there. Yeah, there's no phishing right click on mine. I can block, I can use the junk mail, but I don't have that. Oh, that's, that's cool. So that must be leveraging ATP in there. Yeah, they, they have it's threat a very... protection for those people who may be wondering. But Microsoft, yes. the, we have uh, the license that allows us to do advanced threat protection, but I've just never really used mm -hmm. the web mail. So I haven't really ever seen that. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. It's funny. I do notice that when I'm using Outlook on my phone, right, that uh, in case anybody's wondering, this is a Surface Duo. Um, there are other phones besides iPhones. <clears throat> and uh, when I'm using that the full-fledged Outlook app on here, I do have, like, phishing and other things to report. Um, but I don't have that in Outlook. Like, if I say, oh, this is junk, and it's like, oh, do you want me to report this to ATP? And I'm like, yeah, please do that. Mm -hmm. I don't get that in Outlook. But it's funny. You do get that in the webmail. Hmm. Yeah. So that is one thing. I will say there's two things that are some of my favorite features that I use a lot of the time. One is I love being able to right click and have all of those options on an email. I love yeah. being able to use that. The second one I will share later. Um, oh, is that your audible? It is. Oh, okay. It's the one I thing I to love see. to use. I, I thought I was going to crush you with my audible and it, and it was much ado about nothing. Much ado when... about nothing. No, I, I got mean... her. I'm copying and pasting from Excel. She's not going to have that. No, no. I mean, that really brought up a great point of how it's laid out for people that already know how to use Excel and word. It's super easy to use. Right. It's like, you're not even changing, which is something I never thought about, which is a great point. Well, that's um, that's where I do see frustration happen for people that are switching to yes. webmail when they start dealing with the font with the with the formatting of it. They get frustrated. They're like, yeah. "This is I, I, you know, in Outlook I had it here and I could go here." And you're like, "Well, it it's still there, especially when different. you're copying and pasting content from other products of that are especially Microsoft products, and you're pasting it in the web browser. I mean, it's a web browser. It's not like a full blown. You're not going from Word to Excel, so it's not." completely in the ecosystem of Microsoft. So it's going to little bit look a little different. It's going to be perhaps a little janky. So you're going to have to adjust and play with it. Um, and you're going to have to learn some new tricks when yeah. you're using it through the webmail that you just don't have or have to learn when you're using Outlook from Word and Outlook yeah. from Excel. That's true. That's very true. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about, just two more things. 
One um, that we are going to talk about is creating appointments. Um, this is going to be showing you what our calendars look like. All right, Ooh, here we go. You ready? I'm gonna. This is I'm a gonna, little different. I'm gonna knock your socks off with this one. Okay. You're ready, folks. I'm in my home screen. Mm -hmm. I can click this. I can say a new Get appointment out of right from there. Get out of here. Look, with and that. I can go ahead and schedule it right here. So that is an option. So in case anybody didn't catch that, what I did is I just, I didn't go down here and click calendar, which would be Bush League. I mean, you could do that. <laughs> but the big P, the, the ballas uh, run it from here. And, and you, then you could just say a new appointment or meeting. Uh, they are two different things. We won't cover the difference between an appointment and meeting that we'd have done multiple videos on that. Um, <clears throat> but I think the easier to show is to click the calendar view here. So let's mm -hmm. go something out in the future so you're not seeing all of my schedule today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what, uh, to do today? What, what you got going on? <laughs> so uh, I can come in here and I can pick the time that I want to do. I can right click and say a new appointment or meeting request that I want to set up. Uh, so you, you definitely have those functionalities. Mm -hmm. I could straight go to say a new team meeting from here once I'm in the calendar section and it goes mm -hmm. ahead and creates the dialog box here. I can title it. I can have the people that I want to send the email to. Yeah. And then I can pick the time. I can make it if I want to have it reoccurring, right? Mm -hmm. I could say it's an all day event. Um, so, and I can put notes in here that they want to have. I can even paste PDFs or files in this appointment that I want to send to everybody. I would just drag it right in there and hit send, and they're going to get that file attached to it. Yeah. So, uh, there's a lot of functionality and capability. I have my schedule assistant in here. Uh, I can show whether I'm busy. Mm -hmm. um, I can check the names of the, the stuff that I'm typing in here, which it mm -hmm. will do automatically if you give it a few minutes. Uh, I can attach meeting notes. I can even see the res uh, response options in here. I can use schedule assistant to see what those people's availability are if they're inside my organization. Mm -hmm. If they're outside my organization, obviously I'm not gonna see how busy they are. Um, and then I can have the ability to add rooms and things like that. Uh, and um, it's just it's just really nice. And then you see, get to see like how people have, whether they've said yes, they've, they're accepted that they're coming. You can see that through here as well. That's really cool. So. Um, so a lot of features in here. You can really get your scheduling on from this guy. What you got? Okay. <laughs> so I'm, that's a heavy hammer to hit with. I'm just saying. It is so different. It's, <laughs> it's just like, like, how is it even the same thing? I don't even get it. Okay. This is going to blow pe some people's minds. So in a good way, in a it could be good. For me, I like it better, but I don't uh, know. Okay. I don't know, man. There's a lot of options there I just shared. So going back to the to-do um, my day pull up, you can pull this up and create things called tasks. These are things that are like things on your list that you want yourself to know throughout the day, but nobody else needs to know. It's not a meeting. It's not an appointment. It's its own thing. It's a task. Right. Well, so, I have that too. I mean, yeah. I just didn't cover that, but yeah. yeah. So this is where things change. Um, like how Bobby could, you know, um, click down on the items and add a new uh, meeting or a new appointment. This is where you would just go straight to adding a new meeting now. It is not called a meeting <laughs> in here. They are called events. <laughs> so what? they have a whole new name. Why? Yes. They have a whole new name. Um, there's no such thing as a difference between an appointment and a meeting. They're just both called events. It's just when you add a person to it, it's just an event still. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. There's the no, there's no appointment and there's, there's no two things like appointment or meetings. It's yeah. There's meeting. for the, for people who were, you know, who use that, that, that is the difference between an appointment and a meeting is when you invite somebody, it now becomes a meeting. So they don't care. They throw, they chuck that far out the window and they're just like, it's just an event. And then you can add people to it. I, I so feel that's you, the way to handle it though. I think it's stupid to have like, yeah. 
treat it as one thing. But that's- yeah, I agree. So I like this better. Um, and this is what, when you click on new event, this is what you'll pull up. And as you can see, you can make it a Teams meeting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you just click this little dee dee and it becomes a Teams meeting and it will send it to how about scheduling was- assistant? Do you have a scheduling assistant? So no, we don't okay. have a scheduling ah, assistant. Well. That is something that is very <laughs> cool. So this is, as you can see, it's like, oh my gosh, there is not nearly as much stuff in here, right? Yeah. This is like a quick access to create an event. So this is like, if you want to do it really fast from like your home screen. So I'm going to discard this and click out of my today. So that's just one way of doing it. So you're going to show me the other way through so the now- calendar? This is this is the one thing that I will say is exactly the same. Those little buttons down here. So mm. you go to the calendar just like Bobby did in his. And this is what my calendar looks like. Um, and then here is where you can create an event. <laughs> so mm. when you create an event, as you can see, oh, there is a scheduling assistant. <gasps> I just never create events like this. I'm so sorry, everyone. Okay, so oh, what? it looks so much better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate you right now. <laughs> oh it looks, man, it looks so aesthetic. That is pretty, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, here's the one thing that I will say: I've never really used scheduling assistant, but the thing that I love about this is this little bar right oh here. i really do like that it like shows is, you a nice. little image of your day as you're doing it as you're doing it i which do I like love. that yeah so that is really cool and then the other thing that i love is how they do um the teams you can search for a room as well next right. to your location and when you click to turn it on it's just like okay now your team's meeting is on now one thing yeah. that i don't like that yours does is when you click on that yours adds the meeting information right um, there yeah right here it's, it's all not- the same information every time though so it doesn't yeah. It doesn't here, so you can't copy it and add it somewhere else, but it just automatically sends it to your to all of your invitees and like your, your right. attendees. Um, so this I, is- I think we need to touch on that for some people. They may feel like, well, why is that? Because it's always different. Well, you know, with Zoom or some of those other things, it's creating a different room number or things like that yeah. that are unique for each meeting that you're doing. Possibly. Depends on your scenario in Zoom. In Teams, that's not the case. It's like the the link in the information that you're doing uh, for like, if you're doing a call setting, those are all uh, for the most part the same. Now, the, although the individual meeting link is different though. Yes, yeah. So, so I mean, that's, if that's important to you, then that can be very frustrating. For me, I haven't run into an issue where I need to copy it from there, but if I do, it does send me the invite personally, and then I'll just copy it from there when it sends it to me. Well, you could just not invite the person, right? So you could yeah. create the appointment, save it for yourself, and then mm-hmm. go back and copy it. I mean, that's a great point. Yeah, you can do that too. And um, this does have different... Um, categories like if you want to to categorize it shows the busy thing that um, Bobby was also saying Um, and you can also add one note like how Bobby was saying as well it's just in a different spot Um, and then the options for the attendees you can um, you can click on that and it'll choose optional and invite required attendees um, that kind of thing you can drop this down and I can also invite on Bobby's calendar. This is one thing that I just want to say real quick because I know we don't have a lot of time. I'm going to discard this. Um, the way that you can add a calendar here is so much easier, in my opinion, um, than the Outlook application. Um, I have Bobby's calendar right here just to click on. And I can also add anybody's just like this. Um and it's pretty cool how it adds it. Um, but we can go into the details of that for another time. But I just really like how it sets all that up. Well, we're running late, so I don't think we'll do the add-ons. But let's just suffice yeah. to say that there are, like, if, for example, if I'm doing Zoom, mm-hmm. right, and we're using Zoom now, it will put a plug-in into yeah. my Outlook, which could be helpful. Wow, you know, I have to say 
I thought it was going to be just a smackdown, hands down for Outlook. I am. Did you really think? Yeah, that I really. I, good man, fight? you you were the underdog, and I'm feeling like <laughs> I just went right five rounds with a with a gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really thought a lot of those things. It's been a while since I've used the web client, and they have added a tremendous amount of stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I was first using the Outlook webmail, that was when it was uh, Exchange. And mm -hmm. Office 365 did not exist. So the webmail was just a convenient way to create some emails when you're on the road. And that was it. If you wanted mm -hmm. to do some real email work, you were not using the web client. It was a total joke. Um, but that is, that, that seems pretty legit. There's a lot <laughs> of functionality and features in there that I, I did not expect. Um, and comment down below um, what you guys thought and what you use and what you thought about um, who won and how it <laughs> rounds and that kind of thing. So I'm so okay. curious. And it's going to be a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Let me just put it that way. I think so too. So I'm excited, um, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you